Good morning and welcome to Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce's Let's Talk Business podcast. I am your host, Angela Curry of Curran Consulting Company, and I am the VP for Galveston County. I'd like to start off by thanking our President's Club members, Amico Federal Credit Union, Lone Star College, and Quality Precision Coatings. Today, I am so excited to be discussing our upcoming programs for Black History Month. And in celebration for our celebrating time for Black History Month, I have two special guests from the Neo Cultural Center joining me today, Sue Johnson and Sam Collins. So I'm going to kick it over to allow Miss Sue to introduce herself this morning. Thank you so much, Sue, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Angela, for inviting us. We're very excited uh, about our partnership with and member my membership with the Tri County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce as a lifetime member. So I am uh, excited to share about NEA Cultural Center today and all that we have to offer. But I gotta say, first of all, how much it's meant to NEA Cultural Center to have a relationship with Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. Um, so much has happened for us since uh, my membership. Uh, Ms. Leandra Thompson's uh, knowledge and drive <laughs> and determination has really um, helped to introduce me to uh, some really important concepts and uh, some very important people, not only locally or in the region, but internationally now. So um, I'm grateful to be a member of the Neo Cultural Center. I mean, of the uh, Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. And I, just a little background on me, I'm um, from Galveston, Texas, and about 30 years ago, I founded um, the NIA Cultural Center. And NIA was founded back then based on two kind of separate reasons, but very much on my mind at the time. One thing that was happening was that there was a really robust preservation effort um, starting. The Strand, as we know it today, looked nothing like it I did then. Uh, it was developed. Um, by George Mitchell, whose family really has been supportive of uh, the Neo Cultural Center. But the, the area of town that he revitalized is now just where most tourists come through now. And that is where our current uh, gallery is located. But we did, because of the lack of preservation of African-American history uh, in comparison to that, while there's the history of others was being built and fortified, the African-American uh, historic and iconic sites were being demolished. Mm -hmm. So that was one concern. And the other was at that same time, there was an epidemic of youth violence, um, not just in Galveston, but across the country. And the headlines uh, flashed, uh, headlines about young people killing each other and maiming each other. And that was the picture of Black Galveston for a while, criminal uh, and, you know, derelict. So we wanted to redirect people's thinking to one, help uh, stop the violence, but also to highlight those positive youth role models who are doing positive things in the community and to continue to sustain those programs that we're doing are uh, helpful and positive things for the community. Awesome. Um, so from that, we started many other programs for youth development, family strengthening, um, uh, violence prevention. And uh, for 30 years, that's kind of what we've done. Um, fast forward, um, to, I guess I guess I met Sam in about 2002 or so. Mm -hmm. But at the time, uh, my program uh, was offering financial literacy um, to our parents and to our kids. And Sam came and helped us out with that. That started our relationship and our journey. But he also has been involved with the 
the organizing and uh, of Juneteenth activities throughout the country, throughout the city first, yeah. and now throughout the country, yeah. he's had um, uh, relationships with organizations and has done work to promote Galveston and Juneteenth history. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to have Sam with me today. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want to say about NEA Cultural Center is that with Sam's vision and help, I cannot leave him out of the equation uh, mm -hmm. any which way. Um, he'll tell you more about what he's done, uh, but I am now operating an, a wonderful art gallery on 22nd and Strand, near the site where the Emancipation Proclamation <laughs> was yeah. written, I mean, was read, and um, and next to the fabulous mural that was um, conceived also by Sam Collins uh, and directed, you know, the artistic direction for it was by Reginald Adams. Mm -hmm. And now we have, we're connected in our gallery to that awesome mural uh and right next to the marker uh that sam and the his galveston historical foundation made possible uh in 2014. so the gallery sits in a historic site uh and uh it depicts art and history uh very beautifully mm -hmm. and it's new for us we opened in 2021 uh right after the right before Juneteenth was made a national holiday and it's just been on and popping since then so both our programs are growing and we invite anybody and everybody to come out to the Juneteenth Legacy Project headquarters and gallery at 2217 the Strand in Galveston Texas and I'd like for Sam to tell you more about the gallery and all of his work with Juneteenth. Well, One. thank you. Thank you, Sue, for that uh, introduction. Uh, as Sue has stated, I'm Samuel Collins III. I'm a certified tourism ambassador here in Galveston, Texas. Uh, also a financial advisor, as uh, Sue alluded to, our relationship began when my career began here on the island 23 years ago now, almost 24 in July, uh, providing financial services in Galveston County. I do have a little representation of G County right there. So for the Tri <laughs> County, we got G County. Uh, uh, I'm a husband, a uh, father of uh, four children. Uh, many of them have attended many programs that the Neo Cultural Center has provided here in the community. Uh, so working together with Sue uh, and the Neo Cultural Center, uh, our, our missions have dovetailed together and we've moved through the past two decades together. She started, uh, as she stated, uh, over 30 years ago when I, when I was a tiny young kid, you know, uh, I probably would have went to freedom school if Sue that now I was already grown when Sue started. I'd like to think I was a little bit younger, but yes, we're here at the Southwest corner of 22nd and Strand. The mural uh, was unveiled or dedicated in 2021, but the mural was like uh, the birth of a baby after many, many, years of labor, uh, of working to tell this Juneteenth story and to have our history recognized. Uh, we, we are trying to add more pictures uh, to the wall of our Galveston home, our Texas home, our American home to have more representation. Uh, so you see these two beautiful works of art by a local artist, Eddie Fowler from Galveston, Texas. Of course, James Baldwin and Angela Davis but we have many more images here to celebrate the contributions of African-Americans and not only African-Americans, but uh, we have some art by uh, Samson Bimbo Adenuba, uh, who I believe is from Nigeria. So he uh, is featured here in the gallery too. Uh, so we have other international artists and we're gonna have uh, Kwame Okota Banfo here with the Blank Slate Monument from Accra, Ghana. Uh, that's coming to Galveston for three three months. I don't want to get ahead of us, but that's a, a little bit. And I'm excited uh, to be here and to talk with you today. Thank you so much, Sue and Sam. I am so, so excited. So we are, you are the host now for 
our kickoff event, an international exchange event that's going to be happening on February 3rd. Do you want to uh, offer some information more about that? And um, Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the experiences that I did have with uh, Tri-County, uh, one of the most impactful experiences was when I accompanied them on a trade mission to Belize. It was quite an eye opener. It was beautiful uh, learning about the country and also meeting um, leaders of the country as and dignitaries there, as well as the people and, and business interests there. I still buy spices and order from Belize, some of my newest spices in my kitchen for one. But we are excited that on February 3rd, we will be um, hosting the you are you Uranian you U W A R A N I you you are any uh, dance troupe um, from Belize and it's been in existence uh, since 2001 and during these times they performed all over the country of Belize including uh, primary and secondary schools libraries and um, other uh, various resorts to showcase their rich culture to students, teachers, and tourists that visit their wonderful country. And we uh, are very happy to host them here in Galveston and uh, at the Juneteenth Legacy headquarters uh, at 2217 The Strand here in Galveston, Texas. Um, their, during their performance, they showcased the various dances that they have, including the Hugo Hugo Punta and the per, several different types of dances. I better not try to say them because I will screw it up. <laughs> but they're, they're famous and unique dance um, known in the Caribbean as Junkanoo dance. And so we're excited for them to uh, perform here in Galveston at the Neo Cultural Center Juneteenth Legacy Headquarters at 6 p.m. Uh, on uh, February 3rd. Uh, we will, are also looking for other venues for them to perform if they are able to, if the time uh, allows, because I do know that there are engagements as well in Houston. So we're very excited to have them. We thank Tri-County for all the work that they did in helping to get them here. And uh, we look forward to, to, to having Tri-County and the New Orleanian Dance Troupe here in Galveston. Awesome. And this is part of a regular series that you now do host called your Movers and Shapers Mixer. Yes. So they're yes, going to be part, yes. performing part of that. And that's from 6 to 8 p.m. So that's going to yes. be wonderful. I love Neo Culture Center, love being there, love the space, love the energy. It's going to be a phenomenal evening. Um, and also there's going to be a press conference, yes, earlier in the day. At 2 p.m., uh, right there at the gallery, we will host a um, press conference uh, to tell more about uh, the, the dance troupe, the uh, Tri-County's relationship with... Um, what we're trying to do is an international cultural exchange. And uh, Tri-County and I agree that our Black History celebration, this does kick off our Black History celebration. Mm -hmm. And that it's not just uh, what happens in America, it's Black history, but it's connection uh, internationally. So this is the first of our international cultural exchanges. And Sam will talk later about um, the relationship that he established in Ghana and the internationally known artists uh, who will, whose sculpture or statue will be in Galveston from April 5th through July 5th. So uh, there'll be many opportunities to visit Galveston. Uh, so you can come to the gallery and from April through July, you will also be able to partake in um, the blank slate um, statue, which is very interactive. And again, Sam will tell you more about that, but we want to make the connection of what, how Gal uh, how American history, black history 
transfers over internationally. So we look forward to that. Yes, and thank you so much for being so gracious to host. I am so excited for what's coming. You know, I'll be there with bells on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Sam, take us to the next level here. I know yeah, you got uh, in, in addition to uh, the group coming in on the third, uh, I recently had an opportunity to travel to Accra, Ghana with three professors from Rice University to do research on the transatlantic slave trade. I will be going to Brazil in April uh, as part of an international uh, seminar and panel discussion, uh, one of two representatives from the state of Texas. But what we're trying to create here in Galveston is a space and platform to celebrate the arts in all different formats. So performing arts, uh, uh, poets, uh, uh, visual artists, uh, and to also educate, enlighten, and empower with information. So here in the gallery space, we have a space that we call uh, our weapons of mass destruction. And this weapons of mass destruction it, are the books, knowledge, and information that we share to shed light and truth where in areas that are dark or have false narratives regarding our history. So what we're created in this space is a space where individuals can come and learn and be empowered with information and then leave better and leave as a light as they move through the darkness of some of the spaces. Uh, when we think about our history, too often we focus only on uh, negativity or, or trauma and we don't celebrate success and accomplishment. We don't want to ignore that history because I often use the analogy when I was when I was younger, I ended up touching something hot after I had been warned. Now, it is important that I do not forget that memory, because if I was to forget the history of that experience, I would repeat the mistake of the past and touch something hot again. So we do not ignore the past experiences, but we do not stay focused in that moment and in that time period. So when we think about the 1619 project here in Texas, 1528. So we educate individuals that here in Galveston, the first non-native enslaved person to arrive in this territory was Esteban or Estevanico in 1528 shipwrecked uh, on the island of Galveston in November. So we're coming up on almost 500 years of connection. And we do know that Africans traveled the world prior to 1528. So we educate people about that also. So we do not just start our experience with enslavement or bondage, but we celebrate these international relationships all around the world. We celebrate the contributions to civilization in math, science, poetry, uh, liter literacy, uh, music, all of our contributions. And we want to provide a platform where we could change the energy of this space. My Angelou has a quote, history, despite its wrenching pain cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage need not be lived again. So in this 2200 block, there used to be several auction houses where human beings were auctioned. What we are doing in this space is changing the energy where we give the artists a platform to potentially and hopefully auction or sell their art where they will receive a majority of the proceeds with 20% coming back to the Neocultural Cultural Center as a sustainable income into perpetuity so that we can uh, own our own spaces. Right now, yes, we are renting, but the ultimate goal is to create enough income or an endowment large enough to help the Neocultural Cultural Center be self-sufficient and sustainable. So it's not just about this one mural or this one gallery, it's about all of the work together. And we're gonna build that by building these international relationships. Uh, while I was in Accra, my tour guide actually knew the artist Kwame. When I asked about him, he said, oh, he's a friend. So this is how the universe is working to help us. And he gave me his cell phone number on the spot and put me in contact with him. So when you do the work, I believe the ancestors are working behind the scenes in the spiritual realm to help us to connect with each other in uh, what's going to happen on February 3rd and this group coming over mm -hmm. is all part of a much larger for us to build our, our own institutions 
in in places that we could celebrate our contributions. I'm trying to be the best human being that I could be. I'm trying to be light to drive out darkness. And I'm trying to be excellent so that the young people behind me and even some of the old people can see that, yes, we can achieve. We must not shrink in spaces that we walk into to make others comfortable. We must stand with confidence and be uh, excellent in the work that we do so that uh, the generations coming behind us uh, can be inspired. I'm inspired by uh, the elders that came before me, the contributions of my parents, grandparents, other family members, the coaches, the, the local barber that gave me free haircuts when I was in college. All of those people are part of the village. They are all part of the work we do. And we invite everyone to come down to Galveston, make a day trip, come see the Neocultural Center, come see the spaces, walk the streets. You can read about Galveston history. You can watch documentaries on Galveston history. But it's like reading about swimming and watching a video on swimming. At some point, you have to get in the water. So I invite you to the Galveston water, the Neocultural Center water, the Juneteenth Legacy Project water here in Galveston, Texas, so you could be immersed in the experience of not only the history, but the legacy of the excellence of those that came before us. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank I want to make so it much. Much. One, one point about that, about I, I really love the uh, recognition of the village concept and how um, how vital it is for us to be progressive uh, in business and in life, daily life as a, a community. Mm -hmm. And the telling of our story, I just wanted to uh, shout out to uh, Miss Dr. Uh, Sorrell, Dr. Araminta Sorrell, who just got a uh, approval to run her tourist service, uh, a Black History Tours of Galveston. So I'm just so excited about that, the uh, opportunity to further tell our story. Uh, and it's kind of an extension of the gallery and a lot of the work that's just started happening um, on Galveston Island with the help of uh, Alex Thomas with the with Vision Galveston, mm -hmm. a group that's pushing tourism. And he's working very hard and it's been very effective in enlightening um, the African-American community about opportunities that are available through the city, through the park board that we never knew about. There's mm -hmm. massive funding that's out there for arts and culture. There are 20 art museums in Galveston and we uh, opened the first black run, um, black focused art gallery uh, and history gallery that's for everybody, you know, to enlighten everybody. Uh, and it's it's worked, it's starting to work. And the, 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 we're growing quickly as a community at, around Juneteenth. And we are working hard to make sure that those people who labored for decades keeping Juneteenth celebrated and highlighted that they are also uh, rewarded and get equitable uh, resources uh, to match this wonderful holiday that's new and exclusive in its origin to Galveston, Texas. I'm Ted Ellis. I'm an artist, but I'm more than an artist. I'm a father, I'm a scientist, but I will always be the Juneteenth Art Ambassador for the city, county of Galveston, Texas. We're here at Nyers Cultural Center, 2217 Strand. It's almost like a, a dream, in a sense, to see all of this come to fruition. This space provides multiple opportunities for, for a lot of folks, particularly the creatives. And in my journey, in my quest, in my paint, in my passion, I can share a story that will impact others in a constructive manner. How powerful is that, that, that you, can, you can share and tell those stories through art? Don't tell me we can't work together, that we can't bridge the divide, the chasm, that we can't be the country built on democratic principles that benefit everybody equitably. I just want to be able to do my part with my art. So my art is for everybody. That's part of, 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 of this exhibition. People come in, they, um, they pull something back from it, they extract something, 
and they take it with them. And, um, and we've accomplished our, t our task because we've provided an opportunity for folks to be enlightened. It's, it's a continuous journey. It has been very remarkable to have that conversation and voice and have this space to share that story and that narrative. I would say it's definitely a need and not just a want to have art and culture in your life. She'll care for each other. That's the biggest thing. And out of that, you know, life becomes a little bit easier for us. That, that's where we have to be at. And so the diligence, the, the intentionality of pushing that forward is, is what I'm purposing. And my art has brought me there. And Galveston has provided a platform for me to develop and grow in that capacity. We can move forward together in excellence so that we can improve our human capital and human work. That's what we're here for. So, so, so excited. And so as we're building those relationships and expanding our networks and connecting with people, of course, I've got to take a moment, a moment to share Tri-County's um, overall mission of um, committed to acquiring and disseminating valuable business information, resources, tools for our member, member firms to achieve entrepreneurial parity and economic prosperity in the region and international. And we are stepping and living and breathing and demonstrating that mission every day. I'm so excited about everything that we're doing within Tri-County and as we're making those connections and expanding our businesses for our member firms and of course working together. Again, it takes a village in all areas, in our business areas and our personal connection areas. It, it does take a village and I am so proud to be a part of this village that uh, that is Tri-County that is forever expanding. Is there anything else we want to talk on today? Anything else to be yeah, shared? I, I, I would mention it, uh, uh, Dr. Sorrell's uh, business is Juneteenth and Beyond. That's the name of her touring company. So oh, now uh, when you're in Galveston and you're looking to book those tours, you want to look that up Juneteenth and Beyond, uh, which is uh, now recognized by the city. When we talk about business, uh, one of the things that we've also done in this space is we're trying to educate uh, youth and adults about the business of art. So we've done some youth art auctions with a minimum bid of $100 for the art, and then it goes up in increments of $10. So we've shown the children how to take their original works of art. Some of them have only sold pieces for uh, 25 or $50. We've been able to help the children get as much as $250 for a single painting, showing them that they could profit. Not only that was a, a young uh, lady, I think she was 12. I took her original uh, painting, took a picture, made 50 copies of it for her. She sold $10 prints and then her original sold for $130. When I originally talked to her about her original painting with her father, he told her I was interested in buying it. And she said, well, I could sell it for $2. I said, we could do better than $2. Uh, she had no idea of what the value of her art could be. So when you look at pieces like this behind me, we're trying to give the artists a platform where their art can be elevated to the level of other art galleries. These are at least two $10,000 pieces. And people say, well, why would you pay that? If you, if you Google uh, Yellow and Blue by Rothko, uh, that painting, it's like a sheet of plywood, half yellow, half blue, sold for $46.5 million. When you think about the value of the Mona Lisa, it's probably $600, $700 million. Uh, when you think about the card players and other works of arts that are considered masterpieces, of course, many of these individuals are uh, artists that are deceased and their value of their art goes up. So I was joking with my good friend, Ted Ellis, this exhibit was here prior to the current exhibit. I said, if we want your art to go up, you and I need to go fishing in the Galveston Bay. And when I get back, it'd be worth more. And he, he said, that's not funny, Sam. <laughs> I said, it, it would be worth more. Every piece in here, don't you want your family to be well? But we want the artists to benefit during their lifetime. So we're trying to create a platform where we have uh, art pieces in here from $1,200, $1,500, 
up to thousands of dollars. And we want people to understand that art is also an investment in your culture and history. And we uh, want people to understand the business of art too. So it's not just about looking at pretty pictures on the wall. It is about entrepreneurship and helping these artists to be appreciated. Most galleries take 50 to 60% of the proceeds from a sale. We're trying to create a model where the artists get at least 80% and then the nonprofit will get 20%, but still be sustainable. So there are additional costs that are associated with running the gallery and uh, you know any support uh, will be greatly appreciated. And come down and see the beautiful art and, and buy some and take it back with you. Was there anything else for the rest of this year, the highlight that you want to well, share with us now? I want to, I can share right now what's coming up right now, very soon. Uh, you get an opportunity to come to the gallery on the 28th and 29th, which are museum days in Galveston. And at that time, the, some of the artists will be there to talk about their particular pieces and, and themselves. Um, on February 3rd is when we will host the a press conference and the mixer uh, later that evening at 6 p.m. that we re just talked about, where we use this opportunity to introduce particularly newcomers uh, to the island, new, uh, new, uh, new businesses that may be opening and uh, community organizations that are really progressive and doing things. So this February 3rd, we'll be featuring the new director of the Family Service Center, uh, a new restaurant in uh, Dickinson, Texas at Janae's on the golf course, uh, an organization called uh, what's the, the Ivy Isles, which is the nonprofit arm of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority uh, that is giving uh, to organizations and efforts in Galveston, Texas, and a few others. Um, we are having an art auction for kids February 4th and 5th. Uh, oh, and let me, don't forget on February 3rd at the Mixer, we'll be featuring the Warrior Jet Dance Troupe from Belize. But on the 4th and 5th of February, we're uh, hosting art auctions for kids that Sam just mentioned. Um, for, on February 4th, middle school kids uh, art will be featured and on uh, the next day, that Sunday the 5th, then the high school kids' art will be uh, auctioned. Uh, the last event for us in February is February 25th, uh, the Student National Medical Association, uh, organization of Black medical students at the University of Texas Medical Branch will present Shades of Ebony. Uh, Black History Month in art collaboration between NIA and the SNMA, the Student National yeah. Medical Association. So we're looking forward to that partnership and collaboration and to see that our scientists can also be artists and they're excited about um, sharing with us then. Wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. And of course, every Friday on our podcast, we'll be featuring different events. And of course, anyone listening in can check our website out for the upcoming events and for the whole month of celebrating Black History Month. Was there anything else we wanted to share with our audience today? We definitely want to share. Yeah, I, would, I would like to share that, you know, when we talk about Tri-County and this greater Houston, Galveston area, uh, Galveston, Texas is the birthplace of Juneteenth. There are a lot of uh, things happening all over the country. Uh, there's uh, talk of a national museum in Fort Worth. And I think the collaboration of us working in this area, the economic opportunity of telling this Juneteenth story is great for everyone. So we do not have to compete with Fort Worth for the National Museum. Galveston is a major port city. So we're gonna step it up and be the Galveston International Juneteenth Museum. Uh, so that we all could be involved in telling this Juneteenth story. I gave y'all two hats, I'm giving y'all my third hat now. The Galveston, <laughs> I, I wear many hats in Galveston. So the Galveston Juneteenth group, and uh, we, we've partnered with Emancipation Park. Last year, we received a micro grant 
So there's already partnership between Houston and Galveston, the emancipation trail work that many individuals on that committee are working together. It is very important that we capture this opportunity and moment and not let it slip through our hands because everybody's trying to capitalize on the Juneteenth story without actually uh, being committed to really telling the true history. When we think about the United States colored troops that came into Galveston and the Union soldiers that came into Texas after Juneteenth, 75% of those Union soldiers were United States colored troops. It's not taught in Texas history. It's not taught in high school or in college, but we need to make sure that people know we fought for our own freedom. We were not sitting idly by waiting to be rescued and they were not only United States colored troops, but a large majority of them were very influential in spreading the message of freedom throughout this Texas territory. And they were instrumental in the victories that the union had. And we need to tell those stories. We need to tell the stories of building our own communities. When we think about the 50 years between 1865 and 1915, we built colleges, universities, uh, cities, churches, schools, and we need to uh, uh, learn from those examples of working together, as uh, Sue has already talked about. Uh, nobody does this work alone. None of us do this work alone. It takes team building. It takes unity. And I'm uh, glad to have the opportunity to uh, sit at the feet of Miss Sue Johnson and learn from her. Look at her, look at her, look at her. You can, you can cash out me that $10 when we get off. off of <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, uh, uh, Angela, thank you for the opportunity to have a platform to share this, this information. And we look forward to visiting uh, everyone when they come to Galveston and also making our way to Houston and other areas uh, to collaborate on future projects. And there's so much that's gonna happen throughout the rest of the year. We named some things in this first quarter, but we wanna think about in the second, third and fourth quarters, there will be more opportunity to collaborate together and to build on this momentum and not be slowed down. Slowed down. We're working with Prairie View A&M University and Texas A&M University to design a Juneteenth Museum. Uh, we don't know if it's going to get funded, but we're going to keep pressing and keep uh, striving for excellence. Uh, many people don't know it was black legislators that pushed for the establishment of those land grant colleges, both Prairie View and Texas A&M. People like Matthew Gaines and George T. Ruby, who were two black senators during Reconstruction in 1869. Gaines even advocated for all the children to go to school in the 1870s together. He said, the war is behind us. The old days are behind us. The children play well together. Let them go to school together and work together. But of course, we know that did not happen. Absolute equality did not happen at that time. We're still striving for absolute equality, which is mentioned in general order number three. This involves an absolute equality. And on the mural, the bottom line of the mural, states absolute equality absolute equality is not equal results absolute equality is giving every human being an equal opportunity to become the very best, best version of him or herself without hurdles or barriers hindering that growth or development so we're going to continue to press we're going to continue to advocate for equitable support of the work that we're doing here in the community and we're going to fight the good fight until absolute equality is achieved and we're going to be unapologetic about the work that we do thank you sam thank you so much and that gives me an opportunity to talk about some of those things that we're going to do that will require that we have good cooperation and partnership uh, with uh, our local you know, city and area businesses. We are a nonprofit organization, unlike many of the members of the Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. I'm uh, not a business, uh, you know, but nonprofits run like businesses. So mm -hmm. that we do have to have fundraising. And one, some that I'm very excited about is our second annual Juneteenth Emancipation Celebration Gospel Concert. Uh, and it would be our second year. Last year, we had our first that was quite successful 
for the short time that we had to plan and, and get the financing together. But it was successful and well received. Uh, we featured uh, Bishop Marvin Sapp and others. Uh, we're featuring nationally recognized artists. And we also take that time to honor and recognize national, regional, and local human or civil rights advocates or advocates who make, uh, who whose effort made Juneteenth a national uh, holiday. Last year, we celebrated um, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and uh, locally Kim Yancey, who's the national, uh, the president of the mainland chapter of the NAACP at the time, who was really going through a whole lot at, you know, trying to do what she does. Uh, but and, Dr. and Reverend James Thomas, who helped to advocate to make uh, Juneteenth a state holiday, along with uh, Representative Al Edwards. Uh, so we'll do that on June 16th and look for ticket sales soon. Um, we also are going to host the Juneteenth Symposium on June 15th at the Galveston Island Convention Center. Uh, the topic there at that symposium will be monuments to memorials in public spaces, combining history, art, and culture. Uh, we'll have panel discussions that will consist of historians and artists uh, to talk about this very important topic. And lastly, um, we are going to have that Sam spoke about the blank slate monument. It's a powerful and thought-provoking interactive sculpture by Kwame Akoto Bamfo, internationally renowned artist. Uh, his his uh, piece is titled Hope for a New America. It will be on display at the Rosenberg Library again, April 5th through July 5th. And um, it will have traveled to 12 other major cities across the South and the Midwest in presenting the mobile art installation uh, that aims to engage Americans in a conversation on hope and healing, including an interactive blank slate component. The people who visit will be able to uh, share their opinions in real time on the fight for racial justice and their words will be displayed anonymously on this big slate uh, on top of the mural. It, we expect to get thousands of visitors to see this um, art installation. And I mentioned it to some friends who got real excited because I had never heard of this artist before. I'd seen his work, but I'd never heard it. I didn't remember his name, but he has phenomenal pieces. And uh, again, this will be the last site, I believe, of uh, this 12, uh, of 12 major cities. It's been to Times Square, uh, the King Center, uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge, uh, the Du Bois Sable Museum, and all just all over the country. And mm -hmm. so we're very proud to have Galveston be the spot that it probably ends in before it's sold. <laughs> that is so wonderful. I am loving all of the information. Um, I don't know if there's anything else we want to share today other than we are on point and ready for the next weekend that's coming up um, for the Belize group that's coming in. I am so excited. Do you want to share your contact information with those that are online so, so that we'll know how to get a hold of you? Of course, if we can, uh, you mentioned that you're a nonprofit. If people want to join and your programs or support your programs, how would they do that? How, where would they go to support NIA Cultural Center? Um, right now at www.neocultural.org, um, sites getting some little work done right now. So if it doesn't work right now, please go back, um, but it may be fine. Uh, and then you can contact me at 409-765-7086. Uh, that's at Nia Cultural Center, or you can contact me at Sue Johnson at neacultural.org. Awesome. And Sam, how do how do our how would our audience um, reach out to you for your services? 
uh, www.truthstrong.org. Truthstrong.org. Uh, I travel the country and speak uh, on various top topics and subjects, not just on history. Um, and, and there are multiple ways that you could support NIA. So one of the things that I've done, uh, major corporations have contacted me to do presentations. Instead of taking payment for those presentations, I've asked for donations of my honorarium to go to the NIA Cultural Center. Uh, I, you can get paid, then make donations, but sometimes you could set up uh, these relationships where direct uh, contributions could go uh, uh, to one company was uh, so moved by my uh, donation uh, one year that they ended up matching my honorarium uh, in sending uh, twice as much. So uh, that was uh, a, a shock uh, to me. Uh, I actually had offered them to donate my honorarium before I realized how much they were going to pay. I was like, wait a minute, I, I can take that direct deposit. <laughs> now, but uh, I told my wife, said, why did you do that? I said, we, the universe never allows us to be cheated. When your heart is right and pure, it will come back to you in, in a multiple that you can't even measure. And that has happened. My trip to Accra, Ghana was totally paid for, after a hotel, all of that. I didn't even ask for that. But when you're doing it in other areas, the universe, universe understands that you're, you're light and doing good and that will be doors of opportunity that open up. So don't ever feel like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe this was a mistake or I shouldn't have done this. When you're doing the good work, continue doing the good work, be encouraged, don't give up. Uh, even when it doesn't look right on paper, the math doesn't add up, the numbers doesn't look right. Continue to make the sacrifice, continue to make an investment in each other, continue mm -hmm. to make an investment in sharpening your skills so that you would be better continue to make an investment in the children and the youth of your community, and remember to give back to those elders in your community that now are in a position where maybe they can't earn income, they can't do what they used to do, but they need us that are coming behind them to support them and help them. And it's not always monetary. Sometimes it's just checking in on them and saying hello, going by Mr. and Miss Smith or Thompson or Jones or Collins or Johnson or Curry, and just saying, hey, I'm just checking on you to see if you need anything. I understand eggs are high. Here's a dozen eggs. <laughs> you know, just an example, just checking on them and doing the little small things uh, to make their life better. And the other thing I want you to remember is to time is so important and so precious. Spend time with those you love. Spend time with those that you support because that's something you can't get get more money. We could get more things, but that time with your children, grandchildren, and spending quality time with those that you care about is something that when I sit down with individuals talking about their finances at the end of their life, they have a, a lot of money. What they value most is the memories they have of their family, the vacations, the time they spent with those that they love. Mm. Nothing wrong with working hard, trying to get as much as you could get to take care of the things you need to take care of, but don't forget to invest time with those that you love and care about. And I love y'all. I love you too, Sam. And I have one last comment though, Ms. Yeah. And I, I want to make sure people know that we are uh, at look, seeking sponsorships for all of our Juneteenth events, the Blank Slate Mural, the uh, uh, symposium and the gospel concert. We are still soliciting sponsors for those. So if anybody is interested in this excellent lineup of events that give respect and honor to Juneteenth, please give us a call, shout, shout out to us. We, we look forward to it. Awesome. Well, I'm going to wrap it up by saying that I am certainly pleased with this discussion today. I am so honored to know you all and to be in your company. It does take a vi village to do what we do, to be successful in what it is that we're doing. And I am just honored and excited for what comes next. So my company, I'll share a little bit about myself and what I do. I am passionate about career consulting. My company is Current Career Career Foundation, which is going to be coming on board later this year. 
with Current Career Consulting is really about helping people to understand what their natural gifts and talents are. And I see the talent that's being displayed there in the art gallery. I see the talent and the gifts of the people that I have met as being a part of Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. I am thrilled and excited about everything that we do, all the support that we have from the community to make sure that this is a ongoing concern, a successful ongoing concern that is making positive um, impact within the world of business for our respective communities. So um, if anyone out there has a need to want to delve into, or we've got a lot of people right now making job changes and switching and uh, the big great resignation and trying to figure out what, what it is they want to do next, I might be the coach that you might want to work with uh, as you're moving forward and trying to decide what the next best steps for you to take are. So again, thank you all so much for your participation here today. Thank you so much for your um, being the host for the first day of the Belize troop, dance troupe that's going to be coming in. Um, and I'm encouraging everyone to look out on our site for any other updates as far as the scheduling for the Belize group and everything that we're going to be doing for the rest of the month in celebration for Black History Month. Uh, we plan to be very active every week out and about. I know in Galveston and in, in coinciding with about Black History Month, we've got Mardi Gras celebrations that are going to be coming up. So there's going to be a lot of activities that are going to be going around in the area, particularly in uh, Galveston County for the month of February.